CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John LaPook joins me now. So, John, is the NIH already working on next year's flu vaccine? Yeah, I mean, uh, next year's flu vaccine was the four strains they're going to be using. It was approved today. And so now it goes out to the companies and uh, they develop it. It takes about six or seven months for that to happen. And the problem is that between now, when you've identified these strains that are out there around the world in the northern hemisphere, and when the vaccine actually gets made, the, vac the virus that's circulating can change. Right. So on that point, a CDC study found this year's flu vaccine has been only 36 percent effective. Right. So how are researchers working? to make sure that that doesn't happen for next season. So it's a huge problem, right? Mm -hmm. you, know, you, have, you take the measles vaccine. Measles vaccine is about 97, even 98 percent effective. Um, the reason is the, the measles virus itself is very stable. It doesn't change. But the flu virus is always changing. So it's like spy versus spy versus spy. You're trying to hit a moving target. And so what they have found is that if you look at the actual flu virus itself, there's like a mushroom type uh, structure on the surface. And there's the top of it, you know, the top, and then the uh, bottom, which is the stem. Mm -hmm. And the top of it is what changes. The bottom doesn't change very much at all. So they're trying to make this vaccine the universal vaccine against the stem. Well, well, when it comes to targeting strains for next season, though, how do they narrow that down? How do they decide? You know, it's kind of an interesting thing. I've asked that same exact mm -hmm. question. How do they know? Mm -hmm. Well, there are countries all over the world that collect viral specimens mm. and they send them to centers wow. and those centers look at them and they analyze it and they say okay it looks like these are kind of circulating around there and and by the way because we know about the way these things go it looks like these probably are going to be the pre prevalent ones given next season but it's it's like fortune telling right you know it's like trying to predict anything future. else in the li in life yeah. you know it's hard, hard to do that predict the future like that well there is a new drug designed to kill the flu virus um, that's being improved in Japan and it could hit shelves there in May what is the likelihood of that drug or one similar coming to the US you know maybe one similar I, I took a look at that drug and, mm -hmm. and although it gets rid of the viral particles that are in the blood more quickly than Tamiflu which mm -hmm. is the most common antiviral used here the time it takes from taking that medicine until people felt better in the clinical trials w was really no different, wasn't statistically different than wow. with Tamiflu. But it works differently. Maybe they could be used together, maybe, and, and just the idea that you're, you're hitting the flu virus at a different part of its chemistry, of mm -hmm. its biology. And that's a good idea. Try to have multiple points. Try to weaken it. You put an arrow here, an arrow there, an arrow in this kind of replication mechanism, and an arrow in the part of, that releases the virus to the system, and maybe together you can be better than just one alone. So we're in March now. How long can we expect this year's flu season to last? You know, uh, in previous seasons, it can go as long as May. So the CDC says it takes about two weeks for the flu vaccine to kick in. There's still time to get it. We are starting to be a little bit on the on the downside now. But, you know, it doesn't matter statistically if there are fewer cases. If you get it, you don't you're not very happy. All right. Dr. John LaPook, always great to Elaine, see you. Great Thanks to see so you. much.